All right, good afternoon, and welcome to the Subdivision Modeling with Grasshopper and Weaverbird webinar. A couple of things before we get started. Um, can everyone hear me all right? If you could go ahead and post a response to the message box, um, you should be able to uh, let us hear from you. Great. It looks like the audio is working. Fantastic. All right, well, welcome again uh, to Subdivision Modeling with Grasshopper and Weaverbird webinar. Subdivision Modeling provides a fluid way to create and control complex, continuous forms using simple primitives. Beginning with a presentation on the main principles of working with meshes and subdivisions, this webinar will incrementally unpack a diverse set of tessellation and smoothing techniques through a series of exercises in Rhino, Grasshopper, and Weaverbird. With two instructors offering, offering guided curriculum and continuous support, it is our goal to provide you with an in-depth and personal learning experience this afternoon. So I'm Ronnie Parsons, uh, and here with me today, uh, as always, <laughs> is Gil Akos, and we are Mode Collective. Mode is a multidisciplinary design collective located in Brooklyn, New York, and it's comprised of three interrelated sub-entities, Lateral, Design, and Lab. Lateral offers laser and knife CNC cutting services in addition to design consultation and bespoke parametric tool creation for artists, designers, and engineers. Design is uh, our design studio where we develop products, conduct research, um, also work at architectural and interior scale. And Lab, what today is all about, is a share source initiative consisting of a web repository for the creative use of design technology, a series of monthly webinars and bi-monthly workshops, which are hosted um, here in Brooklyn at our studio. I'm sure you've all seen Mode Lab, um, as this is where the registration process uh, takes place. Um, exciting news is that we'll have a new website uh, for Mode Lab um, up soon uh, at the beginning of next year, and we'll look forward to sharing that with you guys. And as we mentioned, um, Mode uh, Lab um, consists of a number of, of different types of um, community-based uh, engagements, and one of them um, pictured here. Um, is the, the workshops that we do in our space. Uh, this is some, some photographs from the patterning lab, um, which was looking at parametric patterns um, and digital fabrication. So uh, during the webinar or after the webinar, we'd invite you to connect with us on Facebook at Mode Collective. Um, here you'll find uh, all kinds of up-to-date uh, information, uh, posts about things that we're up to, uh, various content that we'll be sharing online. Topics that we'll be uh, covering this afternoon are an introduction to mesh geometry, mesh component design using Rhino 3D mesh tools, subdivision modeling with Weberbird, mesh refinement, analysis, and repair, and techniques for distributing mesh components. Lastly, we'll take a look at how you can prepare your file for 3D printing using a really great uh, online infrastructure uh, called Shapeways. But before we get started, um, a little bit of infrastructure regarding the webinar. Um, the webinar will last two and a half hours, uh, including a 30-minute Q&A session. Um, it will be recorded and distributed later for um, you to view. Uh, there will be a series of shorter videos, so it's a little bit easier to, to kind of uh, digest and, and to, to watch at your leisure. Um, and there will be a series of um, PDFs which will be distributed as well. Now, you should have received an email with a link to the webinar source files. Um, you can uh, also see that link posted in the webinar message window. These files are for your reference. Um, they're labeled sequentially. We'll be going through them in order. And we'll be modeling um, everything from scratch uh, together this afternoon. So really, those uh, files are just uh, a reference for you. 
Now we'll also be repackaging the files with anything that um, we end up doing this afternoon that kind of goes beyond what was included in the reference files. And we'll, we'll distribute those to you um, in the next couple days after the webinar. Now, Gil and I will both be conducting this webinar simultaneously. Gil will be answering technical questions on the fly and then redirecting any relevant topical questions for me to address to the group. So the idea here is to create as much of a live experience for you as possible. Um, our goal is really to make this as interactive, um, fun, um, and exciting for you as, as a, a webinar attendee. Uh, this afternoon we'll be working, um, as I mentioned, in Rhino 3D using Grasshopper and a few different types of add-ons. Now Grasshopper is a node-based algorithm editor integrated with Rhino 3D's modeling tools. What it does is that it, it allows you, um, as a user, to define logical relationships between multiple design parameters that define a parametric model. And Grasshopper is really great right out of the box. But for what we're going to do this afternoon, we're going to have to expand some of its functionality. Now, in the email that you should have all received, um, there was a link to download and install Weaverbird. If you have not already done that, please send a message, um, and Gil will be able to assist you in getting that done. But we'll be uh, assuming that you've already installed Weaverbird. But together, what we'll do is go ahead and extend some of Grasshopper's um, functionality through the use of an additional add-on called Mesh Edit. Um, that was also in the download um, links uh, that we sent you guys. Now, in order to make that happen, what we're going to do is go ahead and open up Grasshopper and take care of this right off the bat so we know that everybody's on the same page. In Rhino, I'll go ahead and launch Grasshopper by typing Grasshopper into the command line. What I like to do is split my screen so I have half of the screen real estate using Rhino and the other half using Grasshopper. From Grasshopper's menu, if we browse the file, special folders, components folder, you'll see that we'll get a window that pops open with a directory um, that looks something like this. The address is C drive users, your name, app data, roaming, grasshopper libraries. It's a little bit long, uh, but luckily we can always get to it from going to file, special folders, components folder. Now you can see I have quite a few components in here some really neat ones um, that we'll be doing webinars uh, and workshops um, on in the future. But the one that we're really concerned with is Mesh Edit. I've highlighted it here in the window for you. Now, in the distribute folder that we sent out, we did include the Mesh ed Edit uh, file. So if you'd like to browse to that folder now, You can go ahead and get to it by uh, going to wherever you downloaded the files. And you'll see that there is a zip file right here called mesh edit underscore 1090 grasshopper 0 0.8. Extracting that file, or a zip file, you'll see that you have a meshedit.gha. This is a grasshopper assembly file used for um, creating add-ons uh, for grasshopper. All you have to do is just take that guy and just copy and paste it right into the grasshopper libraries folder. So again, the folder is File, Special Folders, Components Folder. And you're going to want to copy the file that we gave you, Mesh Edit, into the Grasshopper Libraries folder. That will add, here in Mesh, additional tools in Analysis, as well as Utility, that we'll be using this afternoon. 
If you have any problems getting that done, be sure to just post a question right into your message box uh, as Gil is, um, is, is here waiting uh, to assist however he can. So. Now, what we're going to do is start.